My name is Janet Naklia, and I'm the director of People, People and Programs for the Alberta Recreation and Parks Association. I'm really excited to be sharing with you today a recording of the webinar that we had on the Grandmother's Circle on Residential Schools. This is the fourth Grandmother's Circle that we have done through ARPA with the brilliant sponsorship of Communities Choose Well. So thank you to them for sponsoring this amazing series of circles. Today, this circle will be featuring four elders um, from different nations, and they will be discussing the impacts of residential schools on themselves and on the communities and how to deal with the trauma that has come with the news of residential schools. What you will see today is a conversation with these elders, um, you will not see a prayer that had happened at the beginning of the uh, webinar. So I just like to acknowledge that that prayer and that smudge was done at the beginning. And you also will not see a land acknowledgement. So I will do that now because we believe that it's always good to have these proper protocols in place. So I'm here in Mohinsis in Calgary. That's the Blackfoot name for Calgary. So I will recognize a Blackfoot Confederacy whose traditional territories these are. But as this issue of residential schools impacts us all um, across Alberta and across the nation, I will also acknowledge the deep connection that many First Nations and Indigenous people have with the land. And you'll see from our grandmothers today as they share their thoughts, land is deeply tied to identity and to place and to healing. And so I think it's very important um, to set that precedent as well. If you are interested in learning more about residential schools, following this webinar, we do have a series of resources on the ARPA website. So arpaonline.ca with the Walking with Indigenous tab of the website will give you access to all sorts of resources. And we also have an oral Indigenous knowledge hub with more videos from elders on this topic. And with that, I would like to um, cut to the actual webinar itself. And what you will be seeing is an introduction of the elders who will be sharing their stories. And again, we would like to thank them with all of our hearts for their brave stories and for the, their time and generosity for sharing um, their stories with us today. Thank you. So um, Elder Doreen Healy, I would like to um, ask you to introduce yourself. And so you're a Blackfoot elder here in um, the Wilkinsis area and also have been doing a remarkable amount of work on education around residential schools. So I would like to um, you to introduce yourself first. Thank you, Janet. And thank you for organizing everything for us. Uh, my name is uh, Doreen Healy and I'm from the uh, Blood Tribe, uh, Kainai Nation, Southern Alberta. Um, <clears throat> my uh, uh, traditional name is uh, which uh, I hope I'm <laughs> translating it right, but it's uh, how I understand it to be is a uh, woman singing in the night. Um, I have no idea who gave it to me. I just remember that as a little girl, that was what was I was told that was my name. I um, was taken from my family and uh, at five years old and put in residential school. So I lost that connection to my family was broken. And so it made me, the one positive thing of residential school, it made me a, a very independent and had excellent survival skills. So I came to Calgary and I was 17 after I finished my high school and uh, got my business training. Uh, didn't know a soul in Calgary and I have no idea what gave me the courage to come. But I've been here, Calgary's my home. Uh, I had three children. My son just recently passed away in February. And I have two daughters, Deanne and Heather and four beautiful granddaughters, Isa, Kennedy, Laura, and Madison. So I'm just going to, this is where, where our home is, and I've lived 
here and I've, I'll probably be here <laughs> until my last day. <laughs> Thank you for uh, all of you for joining us today. We've got some beautiful grandmothers here that will share their information. Thank you. Thank you so much for Doreen. That was a beautiful introduction. So up next, we'll go with, we'll continue with our Blackfoot elders. So we also have um, Rose Crochu with us today, who's also a respected traditional knowledge keeper um, from the Bikani Nation and has also been very key as all the grandmothers here have actually with um, ARPA, our organization taking our first steps and continual steps towards reconciliation. So thank you, um, Rose, and would you like to introduce yourself as well? Oki damix kanatu ni ni dani ko akoin ni maaki ni tungsto tu me skinny pikani. Good morning, everyone. It's such an honor to be here and to to share some of my experience. My uh, my uh, my traditional name was given to me by my great grandma. My great grandma never set foot in a boarding school. She knew the language, the pure language. And she gave me that name, means pipe woman. And just sometimes I sit there and I think about that name. I said, she was a visionary. She probably knew what I was going to be doing with that name. So, it, and it really helps me sometimes. I feel like I'm all by myself and all that. And I call on her and she just brightens my day and makes me makes me start going, picking those whatever I have, keep going, just keep going, no matter how hard that journey is, you gotta keep going. And I had some beautiful parents. My mom and dad went to boarding school. They had strict rules from what they were taught at the boarding school. However, my grandparents went to industrial school. That was where they learned how to work. And that's where I, I, I got the skills to be a hard worker, no matter what, just keep working and keep going and get along with the people that you're around. And so my great grandma gave me those, uh, those uh, spiritual skills that I had. And you know, and when, uh, when we all got the uh, colonial colonized, I can't even say the word. <laughs> we, I, I put my language, I didn't want to speak the Blackfoot language or spoke English because my mom and dad said, we got punished for speaking the language. So my kids are not going to go to boarding school. They're going to go to a day school. So I went to a day school at a grade, it was called Beginners. And that's where I started uh, as a day schooler. But they spoke to us in English. They said, we, we got punished. We don't want you knowing the language. However, my grandparents still had that. And we still, it was kind of like we went undercover with the language. But anyways, I have three, I had three beautiful children. I lost my son in the, uh, in the uh, early nineties. It was very traumatized. And however, I have two beautiful daughters that are successful in their business. I have five beautiful grandchildren. Sometimes I think the grandchildren should have came before the children. But anyways, I do anything for them. I'm there, I support them, and I learn from them too. And also one person that we call it our chief in our family is our great grandson, Knox. Knox is such a, he was such a, a instrumental role in all what we were going through. We taught him love. We taught him how to get along with people. So with those skills and knowing his culture, he'll be successful. And that's what our, our goal is to teach our young people. And I'll end it there. I'm just sorry to give, give me my, uh, my talk, but it's, so, it's such an honor to be with all you beautiful people. And out there, you try hard. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Rose Agakamat, the concept of trying hard. Um, definitely a beautiful idea. And two, again, like the, I, the, the fact that we got to hear today at their opening, so thanks again for that prayer in all of the languages, goes back to that um, dedication your family had to you, Rose, to learning your language still, despite the challenges. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, Edme, Elder Edme Comstock is next with her introduction. introduction. 
she has also been a key role. Um, she's done a lot of work with our Choose Well, Communities Choose Well program, who is sponsoring this event today, like we mentioned, and also is from one of the most historic families of the Red River Settlement. So I will let Edme introduce herself. So welcome today, Edme. Thank you. Marshi Ketetin. Um, I get emotional when I hear other people talk. Rose, you're such a treasure. Thank you for being such a beautiful sister. And to Doreen and to Carrie as well. To Janet, thank you. I come from a family of 17. Being the last one was always a little tough, I'll tell you. But we learned to love. They told us that there's seven steps that you should always remember. You won't do them the way we're teaching you. And they give me the name of a Tim. And a Tim in Cree means a dog. They give my brother Wapus. But when I ask why, they said a dog is a protector. A dog is faithful. A dog loves people and protects people not only their own, but other children. So then I was proud of it. And today I am proud of it. Um, we were taught that going to residential school was really difficult, but we also learned that if you're there, learn as much as you can. Learn what you need to know to get on in the world, but don't ever forget to love and respect people. Accept humility with humbleness. That was a difficult part. <laughs> I found that very difficult. Um, so, you know, the seven steps were, or the seven secret teaching as they called and are still called in with our people is love, respect, humility. And sometime each of us can identify this is what we're really using, but we don't call them by that. We just know it, we follow it and we get the courage. And sometimes there's some wisdom that comes from other people and our own wisdom together and the honesty and the truth of who we are as people. There is a time when Métis people went through this hard time and the black hours. But my parents said, you have to march on. You have to love everybody. Every First Nation deserves love because this is their land. Mother Earth belongs or is theirs and they've kept it so pure. And as part of your background, my child, you are from one of those nations on both sides of your family, your mother's side and my side. Cree and Soto. Cree on my dad, Cree and Soto on my mom. So to be, to learn to heal, we have to learn to love. We have to learn, it starts with ourselves. It'll start in a as I hear others, other elders speak, I always hear the love in their voice. I always hear their direction. So being together with my elders and being asked to take part, what an honor to be able to follow the footsteps that I was taught as a child. As you become older, you realize how important it is, those, those steps. How important it is, the truth and the honesty and to be honest enough to say to somebody, yes, this hurt. Sometimes it's hard to tell somebody you're hurting because you have humility in there. But you gotta be humble enough to understand that everything we do today is a great teaching. Everything that you see around us, all the elders, 
that are here together as we take part in different circles. There's so much love. There's so much teaching. And, and when I hear other First Nation language, there's so much beauty. And all of us at one time were told we couldn't speak our language. So yes, I, I can speak the Machif language, but people think there's only one. There's many dialects because there's many First Nation and their words are important as the Cree word or the Soto word. And so they'll be mixed with our either French or English. It's a mixture of three language often. The language I was raised with was French, English, and Cree. And so there's, when I say Tanshi, another Métis might say Chavo. So the language will be mixed, but that doesn't make it less important. And it's important that our children knows that they need to carry on. And yes, Rose, you have a fantastic great-grandson. He's been the joy. I think of him often, and I'm so thankful for you sharing him, to share it, that love. There's no other love than the love that we share amongst each other. There's no other joy than the joy of being with other elders that share who they are and how difficult it was. So when you think of the pain you might have gone through, you think, hey, I wasn't alone and we're not alone, but you're right. Sometimes we feel, am I doing, am I saying the right thing? Am I kind enough? Am I loving enough? Am I honest enough? Am I wise enough to be doing what I'm doing to pass on our language, our history, our love? John Bruce was the first Métis president. That is my great grandfather. Louis Riel was his secretary. As children, we weren't allowed to talk about that. But today we share the, our history and we share the importance of learning to love everyone and to share with dignity and love. And, and that's very important to me. And I thank each and every one of you. And as to, to come to healing, it's that it starts with ourselves to go through learning how to do things. So if we start with ourselves, how we can change things for us and, and we learn from others. We learn how respectful and the respect and the love and the humility that we might all have together at one time or another. But to be so humble, to hear the humbleness of my elders, to hear their courage and their honesty, that has given me guidance as well, not only where I come from, not only my daily life. And I have, I had four children. I too lost a son in, in 2000 in a very painful way. I have three beautiful daughters. My youngest daughter can speak Machif with me, but my other two had been punished so much at school that they will not speak it. They understand it, but they speak. So sometime if we can only lead other families to encourage the language, this is wonderful. I think it's beautiful if they learn their language, who they are. It's a way of people knowing who they are. And that's a way of healing to have trust. Sometimes we don't have trust. And when we don't have trust, we fear. So we don't want that fear. So we need to learn more trust sometime. But for all those listening to how to heal from trauma, it is not easy. It is difficult, but it can be made easy through all the seven steps with the love, the courage, 
the humility, the honesty, and the truth and the courage to do so. Um, so for this, I thank each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Edna. That was a very beautiful, um, very beautiful introduction and beautiful thoughts. We really appreciate that from that Métis perspective. So thank you so much for that. I also forgot to mention as I was um, um, introducing Rose that I think it might be her birthday today, perhaps. So um, Rose is giving her time today as a birthday present to all of us. So thank you. Happy birthday to Rose. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, sister, and many more. So thank you for that, Edme. Um, so we're going to move on to our introduction for um, Elder Carrie, um, Carrie Moore, who is a Cree Métis elder, but also um, a trauma specialist and a uh, psychotherapist. So she walks in both worlds, which is very interesting, and so has a lot of um, insight to bring to our conversation on trauma today. So if you could do your introduction, Carrie, and then we'll uh, move on to why we're here and start the circle. So welcome, Carrie. Thank you, Janet. And my internet is very unstable. I'm up north right now in the Treaty 6 territory, uh, close to where I was born. Uh, I was born uh, in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, and I'm connected to Muscaday Reserve, which is my family reserve, but I'm also connected to the Isbister Settlement, which, which uh, was taken from the Métis, my grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, James Isbister, uh, and uh, when they, when they uh, were scripted, and they were uh, given money, and with that money, they bought land outside of Prince Albert, uh, where our where our settlement still remains today. So um, I hope that you can hear me and that I'm not going to go all funny. Good. Um, so I will uh, just say thank you so much. I'm very honored that um, that I could be together with these beautiful special grandmothers who are all very special to me as well. And um, I've learned a great deal from all of these grandmothers here. Um, and we keep learning always. We never stop learning from each other. And I think the most important thing is that we are there for each other because we become great friends as well in the process. And never think for one moment that because we may have wisdom because we're old. No, <laughs> we have wisdom because we've learned a lot along the way as well. Uh, and we've learned to deal with those things along the way. And we learn from each other. But, you know, we laugh a lot and we, um, and we joke around with each other too. We've learned that laughter is healing as well. So uh, let me just say um, uh, that my name is Wapen Mihigan That is my family name. It means gray wolf spirit woman. It is Cree and it was given to me uh, by an elder in my community. And the wolf is the teacher. And uh, little did I know that I would become a teacher one day uh, and I am. So I guess that name is fitting of me. Um, uh, in, I was named by uh, Kelly and Daphne Good Eagle um, and had a ceremony uh, and uh, they called me Muxanaki and uh, that means red woman. Um, yes, I love the color red, but that is not why they named me that. Uh, it's more like the, the person, as I was told, uh, has, has faced many challenges and succeeded. And for that reason, I get to wear that red plume in my hair uh, when, uh, when I'm in a powwow or when, if I ever have to face another challenge in battle. But so I'm very honored by, by that name. I think we have all faced many challenges in our lives. We have, we don't get where we are without facing challenges in our lives. Um, <coughs> excuse me. My children, my grandchildren were here visiting me and just left and my dog is howling right now. Hopefully you can't hear her. She misses the grandbabies. Rose, I was, you know, I, I, I think about, you know, when, what you said about your grandchildren. I tell people that are new grandparents uh, that it is the greatest gift the creator gives us. My grandchildren are, I have three granddaughters 
and um, they are just uh, a joy to me. And no matter what is happening in my life, and I know we all feel this way, they change how we feel because we see in them that love and that kindness and that beautiful um, spirit, untouched. Um, and as grandmothers, we try hard to keep it that way. Um, and we don't necessarily have the time with our children when we're raising them. So uh, with our grandchildren, um, we watch them and we protect them and we love them. Um, and we teach them uh, about how they are here for a reason too. And that that love and that kindness and that compassion is going to get them through. So my grandchildren as well are the greatest gift to me. Um, I had all three of them with me up until half an hour ago. Um, and my house, my cabin was turned upside down. And you know what? It didn't matter. <laughs> Because that's so good. If my children had done that, I would have been getting them to help me. But grandchildren, you, you see their laughter, you see their joy. Um, and that's all that matters. So um, I, am, I, I just think that that gift keeps on coming and going with me uh, and keeps me, get, gets me through. I just have to look at those little girls and, and their smiles and their love. And it gets me through uh, whatever is happening in my life. Um, just a little bit about the fact that I am from Treaty 6, but I've lived in Treaty 7 territory for 47 years. And I'm very, very honored and grateful to have met so many elders in Treaty 7 territory. One of my teachers was Margaret Yellowhorn many years ago. She worked with me for about seven years. I fasted with her um, on, the, on the Treaty 7 uh, land and really started to learn about the Blackfoot culture through her, not so that I could be Blackfoot, but so that I could build that relationship. And so I'm really, really grateful for her teachings. Um, and um, I, you know, my grandmother uh, was a, a boarding school. Um, she attended boarding school. And in boarding school, she was not allowed to speak her language Cree. And uh, my grandmother uh, is Cree and married um, a Scotsman. And my grandfather did not allow her to speak her language either. Uh, once she was married, he told her she was no longer Indian, which is very sad to me. So her children did not get the benefit of the language uh, and neither did I. And I am learning my language now. Um, it, is, it is really amazing to me because my great, great grandfather spoke five languages. He spoke Machif, he spoke Cree, he spoke Dene, he spoke Scottish Gaelic, uh, he spoke uh, French. Um, he, you know, he spoke those languages because he learned to build a relationship with the people that he was involved with at the time. And, um, and so I, I look back at at the, the, the language speakers and how they learned to build relationship through the languages. They learned to speak the languages. Um, and I only speak one. So I'm trying very desperately to learn languages. I think, you know, um, language uh, is, it really connects us, the language um, of where we come from, that vibration of our language uh, actually connects us to mother earth. And, um, and so, if you can learn your language and keep speaking your language, I think that is one way uh, that we can move forward in our lives. Um, so I, I, I won't say much more other than I acknowledge my, my husband who, um, who is not here with me right now. He's taken the three little girls back. My beautiful uh, three children that I have, two sons and a daughter and my three grandchildren. And to me, um, my family is everything, just like all of us. And so I'm really, really honored to be here today to offer what little I know, but um, to support you and tell you that um, my grandmother used to say this, and I have never forgotten this, that no matter what is happening to you today, the challenges that you face, you feel overwhelmed, 
there's nobody there to talk to. Um, you have creator to talk to, you have mother earth to sit with, but just remember when you go to sleep and wake up in the morning, it is a new day and everything has changed. And my grandmother used to say that during the rebellion, that was something that my grandmother used to tell, my grandfather used to tell uh, the people he was with is it will be better tomorrow. It is a new day. We have to just keep going. So I always remember that because I have challenges in my life too. And sometimes I think, you know, why or what am I going to do? And I look at it with a, in a different way when I see that, that sunshine, when I, when I wake up in the morning. Um, and so that is one way that keeps me going is to remember that tomorrow is a new day. And when we begin again, things change and we have the opportunity to look at it in a different way. So thank you everyone for joining us. I'm very honored to be here. Miigwech. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you so much for that, Carrie. That was such a lovely introduction and a perfect segue um, because, you know, we're going to like move on to Elder Doreen about, you know, the grandmother circle itself. It's like, as I mentioned previously, communities uh, choose well and ARPA, that's us, Alberta Recreation and Parks Association, have been sponsoring grandmother circles, so of which this is number four. But you'll see I'm wearing an orange shirt. And this is in honor of residential school survivors, because I think the main reason we're here today is because of that, um, the news is continually coming out about residential schools and the discovery of graves associated associated to it. This of course is not news for the community, uh, like the indigenous community, nor many of the elders and survivors of residential school, but it's news to many other Canadians. And so um, we are here and I'm gonna turn it over to, to Doreen, but what the next half an hour we'll talk about is that trauma piece that Carrie was just um, addressing. And so there is that trauma as a nation of people discovering this news who perhaps didn't aware of this, um, the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission came out in 2015 with much of this news, but I think to many mainstream Canadians, this is the first time they've heard this. So what we're gonna talk about now is that trauma piece and Carrie alluded to it in a beautiful way as to um, how do we, what are the steps forward now that we've heard this news how do we move forward on that path of healing together? So I will turn it over to you, Doreen, and then we'll go in a circle discussion about that. Um, why, as the originator actually of the grandmother circle, so thanks for that, Doreen, why are we here and thoughts on that? You're muted, Doreen. I always forget. Sorry. Right, like a year and a half into COVID, and we still forget. It's awesome. <laughs> thank you, Janet. Um, and thank you to all the beautiful grandmothers we have today. Uh, thank you for coming and agreeing to take uh, time from your busy schedules. And uh, thanks to Janet for organizing all of these sessions for us. Um, I first, uh, I realized quite a while ago, but last year, just, just before COVID started, um, I realized that we had such a, a group of beautiful elders with so much knowledge. And I wanted to know how, uh, how we could share that information and that knowledge to help the young people so that they don't have to endure such, you know, a lot more struggles than, than what we had to go through. So if we could help steer someone, a younger person, and give them some tools to help them on this, on their each personal uh, journey. So with all of that in my head, I, I was so lucky that we had Janet in our, uh, our group. She was always organizing us. I asked her, I said, this is what I want to do. We've got our grandmothers. I want to help the young people. How can we do this? So together we came up, uh, we came up with the grandmother's circle and to hold different, uh, a series of sessions so we could 
talk on different subjects and hopefully with those with that information that we share with the grandmothers share that we can give some tools for the young people to help them on their personal journeys so that's why we're here today on our fourth one like janet said uh, we want to uh, talk about residential schools there's so much uh, in the news these days about the children that are the graves that are being found um, and the, the, the hard part is the uh, the, all the survivors uh, right across Canada, it really impacts, impacted all of us. For my, I can only speak for myself. Um, it brought up all those hurts, the anger. Uh, and so I had to, I, I had I already heard there was others that uh, in Saskatchewan had been found and along the way I've heard different stories of bodies being found but it never came to the, the public but when uh, Kamloops children were found the 250 um, I was so happy that this was bringing this information was coming and being put to the world to uh, not to, only to the world not to the world but to our uh, to Canada so to have them understand that what had what the, the uh, residential school did to our people and we some of us were lucky to survive but we had so many problems um, so we want to help with this with these sessions i just want to bring our elders uh, beautiful grandmothers so that we can sit with you talk about or some of the experiences and help maybe leave some tools with you so that you can make your life a little better. So I'm just going to leave that. Um, and hopefully, uh, if we're lucky with funding, <laughs> we can do more, more sessions like this. Uh, but right now, this is our fourth one. And we've only got an hour. So I better shut up and let the, the, the beautiful grandmothers start. Thank you very much. And welcome Thank everyone. Thank you for that, uh, that background, um, Doreen, and also for sharing that. So I will move on then to Rose, to you. And I know you've talked about your connection to spirituality in terms of um, dealing with trauma. So I will pass it on to you. Thank, thank you, Janet, and thank you, ladies, for your sharing. Um, I guess what we have to, uh, you said, how can we start processing? Well, I guess the history of contact, that history gave us trauma that caused both societies problems, issues, and just everything. However, our ancestors, overcame that by using their traditional ceremonies, whatever they, their beliefs that gave them that confidence to keep trying. So when we think about that, <clears throat> by going back to our ceremonies, by going back to our smudge, and, and that's a safe place. And that was a safe place for them to overcome all these traumas. Like I mentioned, my great grandma, my grandparents, my parents, that's what brought them. That's what overcame them. However, if they didn't, they would be angry. They would be frustrated. They won't be wanting to get along with the other society, be fighting and all that. But they were, our ancestors were kind and humble as Edmi mentioned those, those teachings that they had. And they had, they absolutely had nothing. They lived off the land, even with the, I'm gonna go back to the treaties. The treaties, we all shared the land because they were so kind, but they didn't know what was gonna happen. Both societies knew, even the guy that, that, that proclaimed what was, we were gonna be given and all that, 
and the and the elders looked and said, "Oh, this guy's telling the truth. It's he's talking. The sun is shining, and what he's saying is is the truth." Because we believe the natural laws. Our ancestors believed in natural laws because that's what governed them. However, things didn't change like that. That's when maybe trauma started at that time, but they shared the wealth. We gave the wealth. So from that time on, we need to start changing our history. We need to start saying, hey, we gave a lot. So that way, if we start doing that on the oral and the, and the Western, we'd start becoming a great country. We gotta work together. We gotta heal from what has happened to us. And we and by uh, and 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 sometimes I remember I said about my great grandma, I feel I, I can't do anything. And I call her and she helps me, and that's what we have to do. So for the uh, for our young people, we have to uh, we have to know who we are. For example, we got to start talking or speaking our language because our language was very kind words were there. We had no cussing words or anything. And even listening to my, uh, to my parents when, when uh, body parts were said, they would laugh about it. But to the non-native, it was, that's what they referred to. But to us, it was foreign. We said, oh, what is this person's? Oh, is that me? That's what it means. So that's why I, uh, I, I, I know we have to know our language and we have to go back to the ways of how, not go back how we live, but to know those ways, those principles and those values. And by doing that is going out to the land, picking berries. When we grew up, we never had diseases because my grandparents were there, they knew the plants, they knew the berries that would help. In our area, it was bullberries, it was gooseberries, it was cactus, and it was uh, Saskatoons and choke cherries. We, we harvested all those, we dried them. I helped my grandparents prepare that meal because we knew that it was gonna be a hard winter. So today we need to teach our children, our, our young people that we have to learn from, from those, uh, from those. Even, even some have lost parents, but we, I took a lot of children, grandchildren as my grandchildren and children too as my children because I lost my son and I have many sons now that, that, that I really, uh, that really help us, my husband and I. So by going back to the land, go pick sweet grass, go pick sage and do that because there is a power, there's a spirit in there that's gonna help you overcome your problems. It may not happen instant, but in time. Like for me, when, what I was taught, when I went to boarding school, I was trying to think like a white person. I wanted to be better than everybody because that's what they taught. And in our way, we all work together as a community. And it says it takes a community to build a child. We must remember that. And we've got to always go back to that. So I just, uh, I think that's all I have for now. But I just know that the elders and the knowledge keepers have information. And go to them, ask them questions. And especially when you're in the circle, it's a safe place and you'll, you'll be you'll you'll start your journey so thank you very much for listening to me thank you thank you so much rose and again back to when i was acknowledging the land and that connection the deep connection to the land and the acknowledgement of that land so thank you rose um and identity too and language that comes from the land and how important that is so thank you so much for that rose and i know doreen mentioned earlier that i know we have an hour but i have authority in this space so if we go a bit long we're going to go a bit long because that sometimes is the way it is in an oral culture. So no one panic. If you have to leave at 1030 um, today, we are recording this and we will be sharing the links. So you could always come back. So no one panic when we're having a great conversation. The good thing is to continue the great conversation. So no one panic about time. Um, so I'm going to go next to Edme. I know you shared a lot, Edme, at the beginning about healing and trauma. Is there anything you wanted to add 
um, to this conversation? Oh, there's so much. Ceremonies are very important. Smudge is very important. Even when you feel lost, if, if those that have shared in our smudges and our ceremonies, even to, to be able to offer an elder tobacco and, and, and ask them to pray with you, that, that's so much to be, there's so much out there, there's so much to share. And um, I think that our, our elders, uh, Rose and Doreen and, and Carrie, they, they've shared all these things. And, and as we've shared it all together, I think it's so important that we keep remembering that without Mother Earth, there's so many things we wouldn't have. Um, picking berries, we pick from choke cherries in Manitoba for sure, strawberries, um, June the 23rd, we always went, and, it was my dad's birthday, so you had to go pick berries to put on his cake. Might not have any sugar at the time to put in the cake, but they made sort of a bannock cake with the strawberries that was sweet from the strawberries. So these are things that Mother Earth is so important. And if, to respect all the First Nation have respected this Turtle Island. And those are things that a lot of people don't realize that it wasn't always called Canada, that this belonged to many First Nation, and that if we learn about their language and their ways, all of us, each and every one of us learn about each other and teach our children and our grandchildren. I have a five generation, I have a great grandson, his mother, Father is Machev. The mother is from the reserve in Sulacote, Ontario. I just can't wait to cuddle that baby. I may, he may be five by the time I see him, but pictures are beautiful. And, and these are things that we had to learn to share. That family is just learning to learn their language all over again. So it shows that it was all over Canada that their language was sort of taken away and people are learning how important it is to learn our languages and how important it is to recognize that. So with that, I know someone else could speak and um, I thank my elders. It's such a joy to see you. And I have to say this, Rose, happy birthday from my heart to yours. Thank you so much, Edme. And I know we talk about trauma and how people are recovering. It's that return to language, that return to culture, that at one time, as we are, as we know from the Indian Act, was illegal. So if you talk about um, a whole culture across a nation who it was literally illegal to actually practice your spiritual or your cultural practices, um, that return is so huge in terms of moving forward with that trauma. So in terms of trauma, I, when I was speaking with Carrie about this, um, I know it is one of her specialties, uh, Carrie was saying you could talk to about five hours about trauma. Now, I, I don't know if that's good or not, but moving past trauma. So as we enter this conversation, Carrie, um, in terms of how we've learned these things, now we're moving past it. What, what would you say would be advice to those who are here today with us? Well, well thank you everyone, because I think um, all of the grandmothers have, have really talked about how we process trauma. Um, I think um, we are living at a time where our ways of knowing were never accepted as evidence-based research. Uh, and I don't care about evidence-based research. Uh, I say to people, um, the indigenous people are the first evidence-based people. We had to learn from mother earth how to survive. Mother earth was our first teacher and those teachings were passed down through the generations by our ancestors, by our relatives. So, um, 
uh, I always think who was the first person that tasted that plant, right? To know what, <laughs> what, it, what, what, what it was going to be. So um, our ceremonies, which are based on um, really not just uh, human beings, it's based on mother earth and those relationships that we have. And so um, I can tell you that one of the best ways to heal trauma is to heal holistically, which is to begin in spirit. We, um, I am also a psychotherapist, a psychotherapist as my husband says, but anyway, that whole piece is really about the head and trauma is so much more than the head. Trauma affects us spiritually, emotionally, physically, and cognitively. But we live in a world where we're, where everything is addressed uh, uh, cognitively. And we know uh, as Indigenous people, but we also know um, as human beings that in order to heal, you have to begin in spirit. That's why we begin with smudge. We, we begin with smudge to bring us down into our belly buttons, where we're attached to our mothers when we're born. My grandmother used to say, um, there's a reason why we're attached. You're attached to your mother in your belly button because that's where creator wants you to think, not here. So um, I just, uh, also happy birthday Rose today. I was thinking about Ed May's cake for her father and I hope you get sugar in your cake today. We have the ability to do that. And so, um, but let me just say one thing that, um, because we're right in the midst of all of this. Doreen is talking about, you know, what's happened and, um, and this, um, how, Everyone in everyone, not just in Canada, but in the world are responding to what, how did this happen? Why did we not know this? Um, and uh, people are feeling the deep grief uh, and grief and uh, is part of trauma, by the way, people, it, it's not separated. We don't separate it. Grief is part of trauma. And so um, what I, what I tell people is this. Um, and what I know is this, not, not what I've learned from reading, but what I know myself is this, is that we have to acknowledge our feelings in order to heal. We have to acknowledge them. Um, and when we think of our ancestors and what they've been through in their lives, they had to kind of hide their feelings and their emotions. And those feelings and emotions are still there. And those feelings and emotions and memories get passed down to every generation. Not just the bad ones, the sad ones, but the joy too, and the memories of how to do ceremony. But those, those pieces that get passed down to us that are so hard for us to move forward are those memories from our ancestors who did not have their grief acknowledged and in order to heal our grief must be acknowledged so what has happened recently why people are feeling so overwhelmed and say I don't know I was able to deal with this before but now I feel so sad I just can't seem to get beyond this is there is a word that has been used for a long time called disenfranchised grief and we talk about intergenerational trauma and disenfranchised grief was always included in intergenerational trauma. What does that mean? Disenfranchised grief is the grief that we carry because of the losses that we've had, not just losses of our brothers and sisters and children and families, but as, as all of you have said, language and, and uh, Mother Earth around us, our way of living, our ceremonies, but they're not lost. They are there still within us. Please know that. And disenfranchised grief is a term they use to describe people that have experienced loss, but nobody believes them and nobody acknowledges them. So, what has happened recently? Why are we feeling this way? Because our grief is no longer disenfranchised, despite the fact that the government acknowledged 
what happened to us. That was not enough. People did not believe it. It took those babies, those babies to be discovered for people to go, wow. And I truly believe that in the spirit world, they have a great deal to do with our healing as well. And I believe those babies showed themselves to us at exactly this time in life. Mother Earth has been keeping them safe, wrapped in her arms. And at this time, all of Mother Earth and Creator stepped forward and said, now babies, we will bring you forth so we can, everybody can acknowledge that what happened really happened. And now our deep grief is coming out of us. Our deep grief. We can actually grieve now. We couldn't before in the way that we needed to. And when we grieve and heal, we also heal our ancestors. Please know that. We were told we couldn't cry. We couldn't tell anybody. Now we can come forward and say, see, now you know, because the babies have told everybody. And now we can heal. So the deep grief we are feeling is that deep grief, which we must acknowledge in order to heal and move forward now. And part of that grief is anger. Part of that grief is sadness. Part of that grief is anxiety. And we're going to heal through this, through our ceremonies, because in our ceremonies, we go right to spirit. And in our spirit is, we, is where we carry our love, our peace, our compassion. It's where we carry our kindness, our respect. It's where we carry our values. And all this time, we've been up here in our head carrying our behaviors so please know that the babies want us to heal now we can and we can move forward and say i have a right to my anger i have a right to my sadness i have a right to my anxiousness my intolerance that's where it comes from from never being able to have someone acknowledge what we're feeling now we feel it and so does the world so we can't end it we are just beginning this journey of healing but please know one good thing if there's anything that happens in the process is that our grief is no longer disenfranchised our grief is deep grief and we're going to heal because creator gave us grief so we can feel because our emotions are creator's antibiotics. We have to feel in order to heal. So we are stepping into a new place. And we are here to all grieve together and not be ashamed, not to hold on to the shame and the blame anymore. It isn't ours. What our role is now is to heal our grief so that we don't pass it on to our children. Just think of that. What has been shown to us can change the next generations. So as grandmothers here, we have the ability to hold our babies. All babies, as Ro says, are our grandchildren. It is our right to hold everyone, even if you're 45 or 50 or 60. COVID came to an end. Isn't it something that COVID created something else? I always have believed that COVID was our healing. We had to go through our healing to get to this place where we can begin to truly heal and transform and change what has happened. 
than we are. So don't be afraid of your anger. You have a right to it and your sadness. But what you have to say now is, thank you. I have a right to my anger. Because when you acknowledge what you carry, then you can heal. Find your way of getting into spirit, however that might be for you. Because I'm sure there are people listening today that may not be indigenous and don't know what smudge is. But smudge is about going into spirit. Remember that. Find your spirit, however that might be. We as indigenous people do that through smudge because mother earth helps us every step of the way. She builds that relationship with us. So we can build that relationship with each other. So I could speak for five days, not five hours, but I'm not going to. I just want to tell you that what you're feeling is healing. And I'm truly grateful that um, we have the opportunity to have each other reach out, acknowledge what you carry. Because when you acknowledge it yourself now, because it's been acknowledged in the world, we can heal. So thank you. Miigwech. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you so much for that, Carrie. That was so beautiful and so powerful. And you know, one takeaway definitely is that we are in a new place. Mm -hmm. Like this, Canada, we are in a new place right now. Never seen before. Well, maybe seen before in different ways, but in terms of that healing journey and that reconciliation piece. So whatever it is that we create, we create together. So that's our responsibility now and our honor to be able to be in this position where we could actually move forward in that way. So thank you so much for all of those um, comments. And so Doreen, I will um, throw it back to you for some final thoughts. And then I have some closing remarks as well. Okay. Um, thank you for just listening to uh, all the beautiful grandmothers with, what the, <clears throat> with their sharing. I too, I learn every time I sit and listen to all these beautiful grandmothers, I learn so much. Uh, so I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that wisdom that you guys have and are so willing to share to help others. It means so much. Uh, all of you mentioned uh, the, uh, the greatest gift that we, <clears throat> we were given uh, was the smudge. Uh, and all of, all of you guys talked about it, how important it is to uh, do your smudge in the morning and then at night. And we need to sh always remember to give thanks and be grateful for what we have. Um, sometimes we get too caught up in the world, the rat race, uh, and we all have to survive in this Western world. But, <clears throat> but grounding ourselves uh, through the smudge and the prayer, it really helps cleanse our minds, our hearts and our souls so that we have a beautiful new day to look um, and to do the right thing for our, uh, for our fellow man. What um, I was going to talk about residential school, but I everybody hears about it, if, and there's so much information out there. But the end result of my being in residential school. Um, the, I guess the hardest part was um, when I had my children, and I had I went then I went to uh, and took went back to school to take my uh, social work training, and that's when I realized that I did not know what love was, um, and I didn't show that love to my children in their most, the earliest, the, it, it says that we, the first three years of a child is when we build a foundation for them so that they have 
the skills and the love and the affection, but they need to move and to go down their own personal journey in life. But I didn't do that because of residential school. Um, but I, my children have were already in uh, seven, uh, four, four years old, seven and uh, eight. So my children grew up with some issues. Um, but all I can say is that with everyone believe in yourselves and love yourself. That's number one. You've got to learn to love yourself. Um, I know we all have our shortcomings, uh, but just accept those. Be grateful for what we have. And Ed Me talked about the uh, the seven sacred teachings, um, because these days are difficult and uncertain times. Um, for our indigenous people, all the, these children that are being discovered, uh, it's affecting everyone right across Canada. Today, like with COVID that really uh, affected not only our indigenous people, but everyone. Some people lost their jobs, some people lost their uh, small businesses. So in these times, we need to take care of our personal needs, uh, such as health, uh, mental and emotional. We've been <clears throat> in isolation for quite some time now through COVID and our stress level, everyone's stress levels are high. So my offering is, like Edna says, is, is the seven sacred duties. Uh, we, our people used them as guiding principles to help uh, one, oneself to navigate through these hard times. You know, pick one that you feel is what you need and really use uh, that one. But as you go along, try the, and read more about this, uh, the, uh, the different uh, sacred teachings and you'll probably move from one to the other. Uh, but one thing remember is this is not a prescription to help er end everything. It's just these are guiding principles that we our people use and it's so they're so well uh, sought out. Um, I would love to meet the, our, what, who, our ancestor who put all these sacred teachings together. Boy, what a wise person. The, uh, the seven sacred teachings, number one is love. Love is the gift from the eagle. Like all the sacred teachings are uh, represented by an animal. So that's how we re relate to uh, the, the different uh, sacred teachings. So that love is the gift from the eagle. With love, all, uh, all things are possible. The creator gave us a way to experience love and enjoy love through our children. We all talked about our grandchildren and I always said the same what Rose said, we should have had our grandchildren first <laughs> before our children <laughs> because uh, they just bring so much love uh, to us. Not that our children did that, but it just, there's just that special bond when it comes to our grandchildren. Uh, respect is the gift from the buffalo. Respect oneself and respect will be bestowed. Treat your body with respect and it will look after you. Courage, the bear carries courage. He brings spiritual healing to deal with anger, pain, and ourselves. Honesty is carried by the Sasquatch. In reality, there is no ifs or buts. There can only be honesty if one is to survive. The beaver carries wisdom. 
wisdom is the gained experience to accept responsibility and accountability. Be true to yourself. The wolf carries humility. We need to understand humility. In our individual lives, humility becomes a factor which allows us to ask for guidance humbly. Never be afraid to ask for help. And <clears throat> if you need to talk to elders, always you, you have the contact information for uh, through Janet and she can make contact to, if you want to talk to these beautiful elders. And the, tur uh, the uh, turtle carries truth. Since the beginning of time, the turtle has not changed. It has been able to adapt to change without changing. So it, all these seven sacred teachings are there as to, and you need to pick which one that kind of talks to you. And, but you can move on to all the other ones. And like I said at the beginning, this is not a prescription. It's just a, a tool that we can uh, look at. And it, it's just, it's so beautiful to have all the animals that carry all these uh, teachings. And all of you talked about being connected to the land and the animals, Mother Earth provides everything for us so that we could give thanks and be grateful for what we have. And also um, having the, I think it was uh, Carrie that talked about balancing the brain and the heart. Uh, we all tend to just, everything that we operate and function and to survive always comes from the brain, but we always need to take into consideration that we need to balance, we need to look at things in the, from the heart. So I'll uh, stop there. I think we've run over quite a bit <laughs> of our time. Uh, I just wanna thank everybody for uh, joining us today and also thank our beautiful grandmothers for uh, coming and joining and sharing their information, their wisdom. And um, hopefully we have more to come uh, in the future for our different topics that uh, we hope that we'll be able to help the young people to make their lives a, a little more less painful and hard on their journeys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, Doreen. That was um, lovely and amazing as well. And so two things to follow up with when, what Doreen was just saying was that, um, so I just put a, a link in the chat box. So for those who will see this later at arpaonline.ca, that's the Alberta Recreation and Parks Association, our website, we have a whole section on walking with indigenous communities that has resources. It has connections to source documents. All, we will make an email and send this to you as well as documents. But on that line, we also have an oral indigenous knowledge hub and an elder library where you can find things like Rose Crochu herself and Reg Crochu talking about what is smudge. We've mentioned smudge. You don't know what it is. That's an opportunity to go and learn about smudge. We also have a um, video with Elder Jackie Bromley who talks about the seven sacred teachings. So I see someone asked about that. So that's an opportunity to sit with an elder on your own time, um, video, video wise and learn about that. So make sure you go to the hub for follow-up information. We will also follow up with you with information via email. And I also challenge it to all of you that we're very lucky to have our grandmothers here sharing their information with us, but it's your responsibility to learn yourself as well. You read, you look, you watch videos, like the whole thing about a lot of the elders is they're being re-traumatized by this experience. And so it's not always their job to educate all of us on what's going on. It's amazing that they have, and we're honored and it's a gift for us. But I think as a nation, as a group of people, we also need to um, put that responsibility on ourselves. So we will share that information with you too. So like Doreen, I wanted to thank all of you for being amazing. I do have gifts for you that I will either mail 
or drop off safely on your doorstep or something that's not creepy. So I will be in contact with you about that. Um, it is protocol to give gifts in exchange for knowledge and for information. And um, we are seeing amazing chats. So a lot of people thanking the grandmothers for sharing today and all of the love and um, for the presentation. So thanks so much for that um, beautiful wisdom. We really appreciate it. And we will work with Doreen about future grandmother circles of which um, we will let you know about as well. So thank you everyone. Um, I appreciate that we went over time because whatever, it was amazing. We had a lot of great things to share and who would wanna stop that amazing sharing. So thank you so much. We appreciate it and uh, thank you all for coming and we are now drawing our circle to a close.